Hi everyone, today we are going to get familiar with boundary value analysis. We will quickly go through the theory, like 1 to 2 minutes, and then we'll resolve 3 questions from ISTQB sample exam tests. Boundary value analysis, BVA, a black box test technique in which test cases are designed based on boundary values. BVA is an extension of equivalence partitioning, but can only be used when the partition is ordered, consisting of numeric or sequential data. Boundary value analysis is an extension of equivalence partitioning. Because of this, we use principles from both techniques. We always start from equivalence partitioning when we defining the equivalence classes. We need to find valid and invalid classes. And then we define boundary values of each class and create a test case for each boundary value. You can pause the video and read principles on your own. It is ineffective to explain this theory without examples. That is why I will explain all these principles while resolving this test. Pause the video and read the test description on your own. Boundary value analysis is an extension of equivalence partitioning technique. Because of that, we have to start with the same step, divide a set of test conditions into partitions. We can define three equivalence classes based on the description. We know that 0.5 to 25.0 are the smallest and the largest values for valid equivalence class. And those values are included in the partition. Based on the valid values, we can easily define invalid. It is 0.4 and below, and 25.1 and above. Both values are included into partitions. Two invalid classes in total. Again, we do not have enough information to determine min and max values for invalid classes. Once we divided a set of test conditions into partitions, we need to move to the second step. Define boundary values. The minimum and maximum values, or first and last values, of a partition, are its boundary values. And there are two techniques to do that. Two-value boundary analysis and three-value boundary analysis. With such an explanation, nothing is clear. Let's go to our test. First of all we need to check what we are asked for. And we see that two values boundaries is the way to go. Let's get familiar with this technique first. As we know minimum and maximum values of a partition are boundary values. And we know that 0.5 and 25.0 are min and max values for valid partition. 0.4 is the max value for the first invalid partition. We can define min value, so we will skip it. Same applies to the second invalid class. 25.1 is min value for the second invalid partition, and we can't define max value. Because of this, we can define only four boundary values. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 25.0, Let's check our answers. A is not correct. 0.3, 10.0 and 28.0 doesn't include any of those four boundary values. B is not correct. Two additional values are included one for each boundary. 0.6 and 24.9. These are the values associated with three-point boundary value analysis. And we know that we are asked for two-point boundary values. We'll come back to that later. C is correct. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 25.0, 25.1 are included in this set of tests. D is not correct. Doesn't need explanation. Let's check three value boundary topic now. This topic is horribly explained in the book and I don't understand why they just didn't delete it. I will use book to explain so you will know that it is not me a bad instructor, just ISTQB is stupid in some topics. Or both. Anyway. In the book we have this simple example. 0 and below invalid class, 1 to 99 valid class and 100 and above invalid class. With BVA, we think of the boundary as a dividing line between two things. Hence we have a value on each side of the boundary, but the boundary itself is not a value. There is a school of thought that regards an actual value as a boundary value. By tradition, these are the values in the valid partition, that is, the values specified. This approach then requires three values for every boundary, so you would have 0, 1 and 2 for the left boundary, and 98, 99 and 100 for the right boundary in this example. 
The boundary values are said to be on and either side of the boundary, and the value that is on the boundary is generally taken to be in the valid partition. Now you know, what I know, I hope it helped. Additional explanation from me, based on our test. If we want to understand a difference between two techniques, we need to talk about boundary itself. When we use two-point technique, we have boundaries which are not values. I draw those as yellow lines. So we have two boundaries. And because of this, we have four boundary values. 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 25.0, 25.1. Those values exist on both sides of the boundary. For two-point technique, real boundaries exist between the boundary values. When we use three-point technique, we say that 0.5 and 25 are boundaries on their own. And we still need to test boundaries values. Because of this, we need two additional tests. 0.6 and 24.9. I hope it is clear now. Let's move to other questions. Let's check second example. Pause the video and read the text on your own. When we are asked about equivalence partitioning or boundary value analysis, we always start from divide a set of test conditions into partitions. Let's do that. We have very detailed description, and it is quite easy to define partitions and boundary values. Up to 10. Means that we don't know min value, but 10 is included in the partition. 11 to 15 means that both values are included in the second partition. And so on. We can define five partitions in total. Second step is to define boundary values. And we know that there are two techniques, two value and three value boundary analysis. But when we check description, we don't see what we asked particularly. We have a clue, only min and max values. This leads us to the first technique with two values boundary analysis. To be honest, even if it wasn't mentioned, I would still use the two boundaries technique by default. As I told you I have never seen question related to three boundary technique. And even if there are questions like that, I believe you will be asked about it in description. When we use two value boundary analysis, the minimum and maximum values or first and last values of a partition are its boundary values. This means that these values which we found when we were defining partitions actually are our boundary values because they are the minimum and maximum values or first and last values of a partition. We have five partitions but only eight boundary values because we don't have enough information to know these min and max values. Let's check our answers now. We are asked for Using BVA, only min and max values, which of the following sets of test inputs provides the highest level of boundary coverage? Boundary coverage for a partition is measured as the number of boundary values tested, divided by the total number of identified boundary test values, normally expressed as a percentage. Basically it means that we need to find which of these answers covers the highest number of boundary values. I won't highlight this one more time. You can be confused if you want to find the answer which will cover all our boundary values. 10, 11, 15, 8 in total. But you are asked for which of the following sets of test inputs provides the highest level of boundary coverage. That means that it is possible that none of the answers covers all 8 boundary values. You just need to find which covers the most. For example, answer A. 0 is not a boundary value. 11 is a boundary value. 20, 22. 23 are also boundary values. We don't count as zero. Because we don't have enough information in description, define min value. It can be zero, it can be minus 100, we don't know. We have four boundary values in this answer. If you will do the same with answers B, C, D, you will see that answer C covers five boundary values. We don't care about number of percentage, we just know that we have eight boundaries in total. And that answer which covers the most boundaries is the correct answer. In our case it is C. Boundary values tests are very similar, this one will be the last one. Pause the video and read the text on your own. As usually, we need to start from equivalence partitioning. Let's check first class first. We see that if you drive 50 kilometers per hour or less, that means that 50 is included in the partition. 
Also we see that, second condition says, if you drive faster than 50 km per hour. Which also means, that 50 is included in the first partition. Also we have this sentence. The speed in kilometers per hour is available to the system as an integer value. That means that second class will start from value 51, because value should be integer. Same principles applies to the next three conditions. And we can define four classes in total. 50 or less, from 51 to 55, from 56 to 60 and 61 or higher. We don't have information to define the min and max values. So we completed first step. We have divided set of test conditions into partitions. Now we need to chose technique for boundary value analysis. And we need to check question description for that. As you see you don't have information, should you use two value or three value technique? As I said before, I would choose three point technique only if it will be mentioned in the description. It is not. Therefore two values boundary analysis is the way to go. When we define equivalence classes, we needed to find min and max values of each class. That means that we define our boundary values automatically. These values, 50, 51, 55, 56, 60, and 61, are our boundary values. Let's check our answers now. We are asked for, which would be the most likely set of values, kilometers per hour, identified by applying the boundary value analysis, where only the values on the boundaries of the equivalence classes are selected. This means that we need to found answer with all our values. Let's check our answers. A. Is not correct. Does not include all necessary boundary values, like 51 or 55. Also it includes additional values, 0, 49, and 59 which are not boundary values in this equivalence partition. B. Is not correct. Does not include all necessary boundary values. 51, 55 and 61 are missed. C. Is not correct. Does not include necessary boundary values, but it includes additional values, 49, 62, and 54, which are not boundary values in this equivalence partition. D. Is correct. Includes all necessary boundary values. As you see, the most important thing in boundary value analysis is to accurately define partitions first. To define partition, you need to understand where it starts and where it ends, to know which values are related to which partition. To find out that, we need to define min and max value of partition, and in 90% of cases those values are boundary values. Hope this video will help you to pass the exam, don't be shy and share your thoughts in the comments or questions. Wish you all the best. See you in the next lecture. If you are watching this video, you are most likely looking for answers to two questions. How to prepare and pass the ISTQB foundation level exam. And how long will it take? Let's quickly find the answers to these. First of all, let's find out what the exam looks like. The exam shall comprise 40 multiple choice questions. Each correct answer has a value of 1 point. A score of at least 65%, 26 points or more, is required to pass. The time allowed for each examination is exactly 60 minutes. Let's check exam sample. As you see, 40 questions in total. Each question has value of 1 point. And each question has 4 possible answers. A, B, C, and D. And only one is correct. Some questions are quite easy. Like these. Other questions are extremely complex. Like this one. And one more thing, which we need to know before answering our questions, is that, there are six chapters in the foundation level, chapter 1, fundamentals of testing, and so on, and each chapter is divided to sections, like, what is testing, and so on. This is the fastest possible overview of the ISTQB foundation level exam. Without it, I can't answer those two questions correctly. Let's find the answer to question number 1. How to prepare and pass the ISTQB foundation level exam. First, what you need to do is to read a relevant material for the test preparation. It is not a problem. You can read a book, written for that purpose, by the authors of the exam. It is also divided to the six chapters, and each chapter to appropriate section. And second thing which you need, is a lot experience, of resolving tests. As you saw, exam consists of 40 questions. Divided to these six chapters. Because of this, 
I designed my course in the same way. So you can resolve questions based on not even chapter, but the section of the chapter. Theory is complex, there are a lot of classifications, terms, definitions, diagrams and classifications. So this approach will be the most effective, to take it with small pieces. Read a section in the book, or syllabus. Then you can resolve questions related only to that section. I have passed the exam again, in November 2020. And updated all questions to meet the new theory, and be as similar to the real ones as possible. Once you will finish to read a book, and resolve questions for all 6 chapters, you would be able to train with around 10 exam samples. Again based on the rules which we already know. Based on the time you are able to dedicate, preparation, shouldn't take more than couple of weeks. All of this, you'll be able to find in this course. So, if you are interested to pass the exams successfully. Welcome to this journey.